Anderson Boat Engineers, and we were hired by the city of Cedar Rapids to put the uh, construction plans together for Third Avenue from Fifth Street to Nineteenth Street. Okay, and and uh, in in considering the redesign into a two-way conversion from a one-way, what were the major factors that you had to consider? Um, going from the one-way system to a two-way system has kind of been part of a city-wide effort to uh, get rid of some of the old one-way streets in town. Um, those one-way streets are kind of an artifact of before we had an interstate through town, before I-380 was through here. And the only way into or through Cedar Rapids was, you know, First Avenue, Second Avenue, Third Avenue. Well, you know, I grew up here, and I remember when downtown was, you know, smooth across, and you know, all the meat packing plants were down there. So there was a lot of jobs. That's where all the retail was, and First Avenue was the only way in and out. So. Uh, back in the, about the mid 50s, Second and Third Avenue were converted to one-way streets. Uh, Second Avenue going into downtown, Third Avenue coming out of downtown. That was to gain capacity and kind of provide relief to First Avenue. So it, you know, First Avenue carried around 40,000 vehicles a day back then. Uh, and then if you look at I-380, when it was built, it came through town and then got up north of town in about the 1970s or 80s, the traffic on First Avenue dropped, not quite to half, but like into the 20,000 vehicle a day range. So that was a big drop in traffic. So then you're left with 2nd and 3rd Avenue that were still one way. Their volumes are down to right about three to six thousand vehicles a day, which is pretty low um, for a roadway, especially one that's a one-way pair like Second and Third Avenue. So then you start looking at it and saying, well, why do we have this one-way system? It's not really needed anymore. It causes a lot of out-of-path circulation to get to your destination because you know, especially if you're unfamiliar with the area, you're trying to go to a certain location and it's, you're just trapped and all these one-way streets and you have to go around the block and you can't find stuff. So, kind of a long story, roundabout way to get to the answer there, but it's part of a bigger effort to go to a two-way system. It's a lot more convenient. And on this particular project, you know, Third Avenue is a neighborhood. It's not really supposed to be, we have a highway through the middle of it. So we're trying to get back to that two-way you know, try and narrow up the street. We're not physically narrowing it, but we're putting the parking on, putting bike lanes on, reducing it to one traffic lane each way instead of three traffic lanes one way. Um, trying to slow traffic down a little bit and give it more of that residential feel. Okay. I remember a man named Jeff Speck was in town and did yep. some consulting with the city, yep. and part of his advice was to go to two-way streets uh, to uh, make the city more walkable and uh, slow down traffic and so on. Is that, is that part of the purpose too? It, absolutely. In fact, I sat through some of those seminars that he gave at the city and uh, that's been maybe 10 years ago. It's quite a while ago. Five or six. That, that, that's possible. But that was, you know, that was when the city was kind of getting that idea in their mind of making the community more walkable. And what can we do towards that? There are a lot of uh, other outlets that are available that are kind of on that same uh, theme. Uh, Strong Towns has a website that's, again, kind of the same thing. Let's get away from designing highways for our neighborhoods, dividing our neighborhoods with you know, these massive streets. And if you don't need it, you know, why, why keep it? Why wouldn't you try to make your city more walkable? So in addition to making uh, the street uh, from one way to two way, uh, you all have also uh, made some changes on connecting streets. Uh, so let's start with, uh, what, was 16th Street be a good place to start and sure. talk about the, why that, uh, what kind of change was made and why it was made. So going from a one-way system to a two-way system, we had some concerns. Third Avenue is kind of where you have uh, first, second, and third avenue are all parallel and kind of on a diagonal from north, uh, southwest to northeast. Well, Third Avenue is the boundary to where everything switches to a north-south grid system of roadways. So you get a lot of streets that intersect Third Avenue at a point. 
16th isn't quite as bad, but 17th and 18th are definitely intersecting at a point. So you get kind of a five-legged intersection. Well, 16th has an island that kind of cuts it off where it comes into Grand Avenue. And so it, it more or less intersects Grand rather than Third. So that one was pretty easy. Right now, that one is one way. It's a right turn only for 16th. So we just formalized that uh, with the design by just cutting off that leg. It's sort of a slip lane off a third on the Grand. So now, if you want to go on to Grand, you just have to go about 75 feet farther and make a right turn on the Grand. Again, slowing traffic down, trying to make it not such a free route. Uh, 17th Street, uh, we looked at trying to cut some of these streets off. Um, again, trying to do with traffic calming uh, and looking at which roadways might be, um, you know, which one would carry more traffic, which one would be kind of a more significant east-west or north-south connector. So in that case, uh, we determined that Lake Boulevard would be the more significant east-west connector than 17th Street, so we cut 17th off. Moving on to 18th and Ridgewood. Ridgewood gets cut off um, as a cul-de-sac, and part of that is there have been some complaints about people cutting through Ridgewood off of 3rd Avenue to get over to 19th, rather than going all the way up to 19th, and then making that right turn in Ridgewood is just a nice shortcut. So again, trying to help the residents out there, cutting that street off as a cul-de-sac. Okay, the, uh, the 17th Street cul-de-sac, uh, with that, leaving that as a, uh, you know, the way it is now, would that pose a danger to people? You know, it's hard to say, uh, you know, how dangerous the situation is going to be. It's not ideal having five legs come into an intersection, you know, because in, even with stop signs, you're looking at each other. You know, when Third Avenue is one way, everybody's kind of going the same direction. Now we have two-way traffic. You might be taking a left, you might be taking a right. Somebody on the 17th might want to take kind of that U-turn onto Third Avenue. And somebody on uh, Lake might be wanting to take a left, so or they might want to go across. One might want to go through, and the other make a left. And all that that conflict alone is enough. But then you've got the traffic from Third Avenue, and then the other leg of 17th that comes in from kind of the north side. So just trying to organize it a little better, uh, make it a four-legged intersection rather than a five-legged intersection, and um, just, uh, again, trying to make it operate a little more smoothly. Did you all consider putting a traffic circle there? We looked at that, um, and we're looking at a traffic circle at 15. Um, we did consider that. Uh, sometimes those take quite a bit of space. Uh, this seemed like it was a less intrusive um, thing, and again, we're trying to get back to that neighborhood feel. So not making all streets go through. Um, now we're not talking about safety. Again, that's just part of the thought. All right. Uh, then uh, the conversion is scheduled to start this spring, this summer? This summer. So we have a bid letting scheduled for June. And then uh, it takes about five or six weeks from the bid letting to get a contractor started. So some, sometime in mid to late July we would get started. We want to get it done yet this year, so we'll try to have it wrapped up by around October. So. Okay. And uh, do you know uh, sort of the range of the expense of doing this? Um, this project, we're, we're doing some seal coating, some microsurfacing basically, not like a chip seal which has loose chips, but a microsurfacing in which the, it's a liquid uh, with the chips mixed in so you don't get all that loose gravel like on the chip seal, but we're planning to do five other roadways, or four other roadways in town. So there's 3rd Avenue, 3rd Street from... 5th Avenue to 8th Avenue, 12th Avenue from 2nd Street to 7th Street, and 6th uh, Street Southwest from 66 to 76. Uh, trying to get good bid prices for doing this kind of work. It's a little bit specialized. So the total cost for the whole thing is just about $2 million.
Uh, before we go, uh, talk a little bit about the intersection of 3rd Avenue and 19th Street, the kind of adjustments that, that uh, you all have made there. So again, when 3rd Avenue was a one-way street, you didn't have to accommodate a left turn from 19th Street down 3rd Avenue. You didn't have to accommodate a right turn from 19th Street down 3rd Avenue. So some of those corners are really tight, so we have to widen out the throat a little bit. That, that's the main uh, thing. And then we're also looking at going to always stop instead of a traffic signal at that intersection. So the signal will come out, always stop. Uh, we'll put a little island out there for pedestrians on the uh, 3rd Avenue side, not, not the Linden Avenue side. Um, so that should narrow up that throat, even though we're making it wider for the turns by providing that refuge island out there for pedestrians. That should be okay. All right, anything else that you can think of about this project? that uh, you imagine people would be interested in knowing? I think this may be the last project of the one-way to two-way conversion. So I, as far as I know, I think either every other street that's going to be converted has been or is under construction this year. So it's kind of a neat, neat thing. Okay. All right, Jeff. Thank you very much. Thanks, Robin.